episode 12 of Kyle's Cabinets. I just woke up and we're about to make a cup of coffee over here and then jump into uh, what is the next country after Chad. I haven't looked yet, so we'll find out. Alright, first up is going to be Chile. I have a bunch of stuff in here. A lot of stuff. Matter of fact, kind of surprised to see just how many things I've actually got in here. So, um, how about we go through, I guess, these pages first and um, get to the glass scenes after. So this is all looking like some common stuff. Pesca Chiloe on peso, I guess, probably. I don't know if they use pesos over there. So a little Manila stock page. That's a big old airmail stamp. That's, or a um, cancel, that's cool. So yeah, uh, just like everything else in these cabinets, all of this stuff is from totally random collections. These look like just a bunch of duplicates of the same stamp over and over, so nothing too crazy right there. Chili. Oy. These are in pretty poor shape, it looks like most of these. Um, falling off the page and what have it. Let those fall. If they want to fall, they can fall. How about that? So. Nice things. These are, these definitely look used. You know, you can look at the different postmarks on there, and they're not CTOs. You can tell they're different. That one's a big suck on the nose. I guess eighty-seven or eighty, maybe. Man, I don't remember these being in such poor shape. Bent up like that. It's a shame. Whatever it is, what it is. There's actually a fair bit of pages here. <laughs> oh, cool. I'm going to steal these animals off because I only... I'm almost done with my animal section. These are great. Oh, man, these are good ones. Like a skunk. Uh, I'm almost done with the animal section in my... In my... Uh, um, Gosh darn it, in my giant album. And uh, look at these seals. These are great. Um, I need just a few more, so I'm going to steal these right off of there. Actually convenient. Beautiful. Okay, 82 to 83. This is just a bunch of, I guess, somebody had extras. Look and see if I see anything cool. There's some old statues. I like those. Uh, what are those? Easter Island or whatever? Yeah. I think so. Easter Island statues. <clears throat> There's another one of Easter Island guy. Eighty, eighty-one. Just a couple of stamps there. There's a lot of pages here. And these are all fairly recent stamps. I'm just going to kind of breeze through, see if, <coughs> see if anything catches my eye. Or see any cool cancels. Chili. Some kind of mountain goat looking thing. We're going to steal that too. That might actually already be enough animal stamps to completely finish my section off. I am actually quite close. This one's fairly filled out. 76, and we're getting a little bit older as we go. 71, 74, they kind of do look older, come to think of it. Hmm. Filter. Yeah, 
Yeah, this one's well filled out, actually. I like this. They're neat looking stamps. Look at there's a heart. That's cool. Like that. <laughs> what what's going on here? Like the guy. He's trying to break some bricks or something. <laughs> Do the back of this, yes. <clears throat> so, so yeah. okay. So, a lot of these are actually mint hinged, but there's definitely just about an equal amount of used. That looks like it would have been some kind of slogan cancel. America, da, 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 da. UNICEF, Reunion, 1969. Ooh. A lot going on here. Centenary or something. Ambrosio O'Higgins. That's an interesting name. Sounds Irish, but I don't know about Ambrosio. <laughs> okay, this is a big old dam. This is an electric dam. Here's our big wigs, as they're called. They both probably have syphilis. Hey, that looks like Gandhi, isn't it? Yep. Gandhi. Amazing how many countries have commemorated Gandhi. <coughs> Excuse me. You know, I, look, I was looking at this, and this one he bothered to mount. Um, see, the, most of these are um, cents. Or, let me see here. Centavos or something. Of course, every one I look at now is the E. What the heck? Everything's E. Never mind. I thought things were cents. Yeah, we'll see. That, like, that's 40 cents. Now, I'm not familiar. I'd have to look it up and see what their currency is. See, there's 30 cents. Um, but I'm assuming the E is a bigger denomination than cents. I don't think it's... It doesn't... It's not the symbol for euros. I don't know. I, I'd have to look it up. <laughs> sip of this coffee. My secretary brought me some coffee from El Salvador. Um, oh man, that's good. Mm -mm. Um, it's a little bit lighter coffee. I'm a fan of dark coffee. Yeah, well, I don't know, me medium to dark. I kind of like strong coffee. Uh, I don't like blonde coffee. That's about the last coffee I'd ever drink. Um, I want it to kick me in the Kick me in the brain like a mule. So these are cool. So uh, hers, it's a little bit of a lighter coffee, but to compensate, I just use a little bit more and um, steep it a little bit longer in my French press. It makes it a little bit stronger. This is probably agricultural reform. That's my guess. <laughs> Just trying to decipher, you know, what these probably are about. Okay, well that one's cool. That one's an older imperforate. I still I have a strong suspicion there's zero cat value, but that's okay. It's still neat. After spending so much time in that last series of. Uh, being practically only concerned with the value of stamps, which we all know isn't much these days. Um, it's nice to just simply look at them and enjoy them for what they are. They're fun to look at. Look at all these, all these different overprints here. It's cool. They're probably surcharged, actually, sorry. But the, uh, the red is neat. <coughs> Yep. 
Yeah, um, you know, I'm thinking actually, coming up, I'll upload at some point here the the next thousand dollar eBay box that I that I had bought. Um, people actually seem to like the first one. I didn't think you guys would, considering I filmed it with a GoPro. I thought it was a year ago. It was actually two years ago. I was just mistaken. I don't know if I ever mentioned that to you guys. Um, these are cool. I like these. When I found the file in my computer, it said last year. And I was like, wow, I bought these last year. I made these videos last year. I've only been doing this for a year. Wrong. I've been doing this since 2020. Um, and I actually did those videos in late 2020 with my GoPro. <clears throat> these are cool that's right I'm trying to think while I'm doing this like keep an eye out for any fancy cancels or anything like that um, I'm still working on my fancy cancel section um, yeah so I, I just didn't think it would be a well received to be honest <laughs> I don't know why but uh, hasn't even gotten a single dislike and uh, a lot of views people seem to like it bunch of airmail here so yeah the second the second box I'm pretty sure is where I got these pages from. The whole second box, just a bunch of album pages. Just a big fat box of album pages. So these are 28 to 48 air posts. Uh, so yeah, I got a lot of pages out of that second box. and I just gotta find the file, upload it, uh, or find the file, edit it, and then upload it again. So that's a, this is actually quite a filled out page of airmail. Um, that's, that's nice. Nice little page there. More airmail. Pretty cool. Just kind of scanning through, through immediately that postmark jumps out. It's just it's not legible, but I like the positioning of it. These are cool too. Look at these guys. I'll give you a little up close on these. Uh, yes, they are surcharges. At least that one on the left with the threes. These just look like overprints, but those are cool. They're definitely older. Okay, 48 to 65. Hmm. These pages, I remember, uh, somewhat I remember, um, from when, I, when I was going through that second box. Um, I'd find pages like these, and it would make me happy. I'm like, oh, yeah, look at I mean, they're... I was still pretty green when I bought that box. And, uh... In this hobby, at least. And, um, to see pages filled out like this really pleased me. These are neat. Uh, you know, just give me a good feeling, like, oh, cool, I... Filling out my collection well with these good pages. That freaking coffee. Oh, I just used the last bit of that coffee, too. I'm actually going to be sad to see it run out of my cup, because that's it. I have to go back to El Salvador to get that stuff. <coughs> 62. No, it says 55, sorry. 41 to 62. Yeah, I'm kind of going a little slow here, because I... I can't even remember these. Um, look at this. It's nice. Ooh, that next page looking nice too. I'll give you guys a close up of this. These are, these are nice. These are good pages. Ooh. What is this? This at the bottom left corner looks like. Oh wow. Okay. Well, hold on. Ah, stupid. So, um, that looks like a postcard cutout, and, um, anyway, this one next to it definitely has caught my eye, I mean, it clearly is, like, embossed, looks like stamped, looks like a stamped envelope cutout, this one, and this one would be my guess, and you can just tell, I mean, you know, older portrait style stamp. I mean, that was definitely older. Uh, I'm actually kind of curious what's going on with that. Let me flip this page over real quick just to see what's on the other side. Dang, look at this. That was me right there. My fault. That was my fault. Get back. Look 
this page. Um, yeah, I mean, these, these are cool. These are definitely cool. The Telegraph del Estado. These are nice looking stamps. Man, those are... See, they just... They, they look so old. I, I highly doubt any of this has any serious value. But um, these older portraits, like those are imperforate. I don't know if the parts were just cut off. Actually, they, I doubt it. They feel like a postcard cut out. Um, these just look old. They've got that kind of older, intricate, webbed design, you know, that I find on older American stamps. Um, signatures. Cancel. Ooh, fancy cancel right there. Oh, that's lovely. It's sad to break it out of here, but whatever, it's doing nothing in my drawer. Um, sorry, but I'm taking that. That's cool. Beautiful fancy cancel on the old stamp there. I love those court cancels. Um, I've actually spent... Okay, so I want to... What I want to do real quick is I want to look up this guy see if I can just find that in the cat and then we'll continue on just for fun um, you know, all these look so old I highly doubt any cat value and um, I don't know I don't think my catalogs even gonna have potentially um, like these postcard pieces um, these stamped envelope cutouts I just don't think so they're either postcard or stamped envelope this feels like a postcard well anyways let me look this up see if I can find that real quick well, darnsies, I can't seem to find it right away, at least, and I don't really want to spend too much time looking it up. It, clearly, 1886, Santiago Cancel. Um, pretty cool-looking stamp. Uh, you know, I want to mention these ones here at the top, with the small portrait in the top center. Uh, those guys are actually one of the earliest stamps. Those are uh, 1878 to 99 and uh, I was looking at the cat values just to blab about them for a sec uh, if you happen to have number 34 which is a 50 cent lilac from 1878 that one actually has 35 cat used and 55 mint number hinged so if you happen to come across one of those variations or one of those stamps uh, that's a 50 cent value that's actually worth something um, it looks like there's a bunch of variations of these style stamps. Um, they've been re-engraved and uh, so anyways, um, then this bigger portrait came after and um, <clears throat> so um, as I'm, I'm looking at the first page in the cat while I'm looking at these see all of a sudden I just completely lost faith that uh, I was gonna go and try and find some of these but I just don't know uh, the ones that I'm curious about are this, this, and this. Um, but I don't really think I'm going to be able to find them without a bunch of legwork, and I just kind of don't want to bother at the moment. <laughs> um, oh, okay, cool. Wow. So, let's see here. Uh, this, um, this looks like. <laughs> Holy crap. I'm just looking at this for the first time. Okay, this looks like the first release. Um, yeah, wow. This is the first release from Chile. These two here. Uh, this one with the star is a later release, so 1853 for that. 1867 for this uh, release. Of this first one, there definitely is variations. There's London prints that are imperforate. Uh, they're supposed to have watermark B, and they can be on blued paper or white paper. Uh, and then there's, after the London prints, looks like Santiago prints that have fine and clear impressions that are on white paper. Now these all, oh, there's London print again. Um, okay, so, uh, well, the catalog's kind of jumping around on me here. London, then Santiago, Santiago then London, then Santiago again. Um, so this might be a little tricky to figure out what's going on with these two, but, um, these, 
Well, so what do we have here? Five and a ten. Oh my gosh. Um, okay, I think I'm going to want to figure out what these are, guys. Uh, these all have good cat value. I know I just said I'm not caring about value, but these are so old that they caught my eye. I'm like, well, what is this? And um, that, that has me going a bit. So let me try and figure out what's going on with these if I can. Actually, I was just reading the catalog just to throw out some more info about these. They're saying that unused values are for stamps without gum and examples with original gum are very scarce and worth considerably more than the cat value. Also, pen cancellations are common in these um, some of these issues and uh, such stamps sell for much less than the quoted values which are for those with hand stamped postal cancellations. So, oh my gosh, that's a fancy cancel. As I look at it more, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to steal that. That is super cool. Steal it, I own it, what am I talking about? But, um, uh, so good to know, like, see, there's a, there's a, there's a hand cancel. That's a hand cancel, that's a hand cancel. Um, a lot of these are actually hand canceled. So, Interesting to know. You're looking for postal stamp cancels, not hand cancels for these guys. Okay, so uh, these kind of turn out to be apparently something that I was unaware of uh, as a pain in the butt. <laughs> uh, early Chilean stamps. Um, now, the number one release was on bluish paper. Now, I just found a thread on, let's see what this website is, the stamp forum, boards.net. Uh, where they had a nice discussion about it. Now, this gentleman basically posted some pictures, and if it was on bluish paper, it's exactly, or blued paper, it's exactly what it says. The paper on the back would be slightly blued. Now, I don't see that whatsoever, so unfortunately, I don't think I have a number one here. This must have been a later printing. The number one was a five cent, so that's the only one that has a chance. Um, now there's a bunch of different watermarks, so let me see if I can figure out what watermark is on this. Okay, so, uh, this is gonna have a five watermark. You'll notice I removed the hinge. Uh, it left, don't worry, I didn't damage the stamp. It actually just left a little bit of a hinge there. But, um, it's kind of hard to see, but this is a five. You can see kind of the swoop, the bulbous swoop there, and it comes up into a five. Now, unfortunately for me, uh, there are three different st style five numeral watermarks. So this is either B, C, or D. Oh, uh, boy. Um, B and C are incredibly similar. It actually looks like the only real noticeable difference is probably the size of the five. Um, and we're talking just like a couple of millimeters, so that sucks. Um, now, as I'm look, I was looking through the catalog here, and um, uh, I've been ruling out a bunch of different ones. Like, there's a five cent Santiago print at 1865. That's watermark D, so I don't have that. And I'm going backwards. Um, what did I say? Either B, C, or D, right? So there's a chance this is either number nine with a watermark B on white paper. That's a Santiago print, or uh, it could be either number three or four, which is a Santiago print with a watermark B. And um, that's pretty much it. So I'm torn between number nine, three, or four. Uh, actually, never mind. There's a number seven that's a pale brown. Jesus, it never ends. Ah, this is, this is, I, it's funny what kind of weird tangents you can get off into um, stamp collecting. I'm like, oh, just notice a stamp and just completely derailed my entire plan for everything. So I'm going to let that dry. Now, um, I will say I was just dicking around with the torch function on my phone. Uh, James over at the Digitalist Philatel uh, Digital Philatelist um, channel, he uses a torch function he mentioned on one of my videos like a year ago or something to check watermarks instead of fluid. Well, with the tor torch function, I've had like no success on this to really get a good look at the watermark. The fluid is the only thing that actually shows me, come to think of it. Um, but the problem is, 
course, to have in the fluid, it has to be in my tray. And even with the fluid, um, I can't get a good enough look at the five to feel confident that I'm going to measure it correctly. Plus, it's, you know, down in the tray, which makes it hard to measure. Everything's kind of turning out to be just like a huge pain in the butt. Um, so I, I hate to say, but I think I'm just going to move on with my life. Um, I did not know that early Chilean stamps are such a pain in the butt to figure out. But, um, you know, I could always send this in to be expertized just for fun, like if I wanted to, I guess. Um, and there is uh, two, two things that can, well, there's two things can be done. So Santiago prints uh, from 1854 are fine and clear impressions. And then Santiago prints from 56 to 62 are worn and blurred. Now on that stamp forum board's um, th uh, thread, uh, they actually have somebody who chimed in and showed some differences between the two different printings. And um, honestly, it is so minor that... Uh, I'm not sure that I'd be able to even figure it out, but I'm going to get out my magnifying glass and just see if I can at least try to figure out if I think this is a fine and clear or a worn and blurry impression. Okay, so I'm going to go with this being a fine and clear impression. Uh, just from zooming in on the two stamps on this thread, uh, looking at very subtle differences um, on things, um, basically just the detail of the lines um, in the hair and on the nose, which is actually really hard to see, the postmark goes over it. Um, kind of also how the C is in centavos. Um, again, this is really hard stuff to determine. And, um, you know, as so I got my microscope and my magnifying glass, and I was just looking, I mean, the, the lines in the head on the hat and stuff. I'm, I'm going to go with this being um, a fine and clear. So if it is a fine and clear, and I'm right, then that means it should have watermark B. And um, now it comes down to pale red or burnt sienna. Now, uh, finally, I have an opportunity, and I don't know if this is going to work or not, to use when I just got my color gauge. So, um, finally, is there a burnt sienna on this bad boy? No. Well, that sucks. Oh, well. Opportunity has just gone up in flames. Well, I mean, pale red-brown. <laughs> and, I, and I googled burnt sienna, and... Um, that's it looks maybe a bit more brown to me um uh, anyways um so <laughs> i wish this wasn't such a pain in the ass um anyways i'm going with this is probably and i totally could be wrong but um i think this is a number three it's from 1854 um well, I have some variations in color here. It could be pale red brown, deep red brown, chestnut. Oh, well, God dang it! I, I give up at this point. I'm not. I I really don't know. And um, anyways, if it's a pale red brown number three, which I think, I don't know if it's a deep red brown. Um, it's a seventy-five dollar cat. Number three from 1854, Santiago printing with a fine and clear impression. <sighs> okay. All right, guys. Anyways, none of that really matters to me so much. Uh, I just wanted to see if I could figure it out because I am not familiar with these old Chilean stamps. And um, all that I really care about at this point is the fancy cancel. So um, that's like, I'm not going to actually write a number or value or anything in my catalog. I'm just going to throw it in to my uh, fancy cancel section and let it be there. Um, so, anyways, gosh, I didn't expect to get off on such a tangent here with this. 
with this Chilean stamp, but uh, I, I wanted to try. And uh, that was a nice little lesson for me about that. Yikes. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if any of you guys happen to know, I mean, if you have the catalog and can even tell me, you know, or website or anything to identify these, I, I haven't done my... I haven't made the proper effort yet to really try and go and look all those up. I haven't, actually haven't looked any of those up. Uh, I just assume that it's a pain in the butt <laughs> and I'm probably not going to be able to find it. Um, you know, this one I can try and get into. Maybe I, I might set this aside actually out of the folder and to see if I have any chance of figuring out this um, this blue ten cent. And um, I just decided to put them next to each other. Oh my god. Hold on. Oh man. I don't think it's the fine and clear impression. No way. I don't know if you guys can, <laughs> uh, if you guys can see that, but uh how well you can see it, but um the blue one clearly looks like a finer and clearer impression to me. I don't know if it's the blue ink, but I'm looking at the guy's mouth and looking at the mouth and the chin and stuff, even the hair. Um even through the camera here, I mean look at the nose, look at the I'm pretty sure that the blue one is a fine and clear. Oh man. This just messes me up all over again here. Yeah So let's say it is actually a blurry a worn and blurred that would make it rose red and that would make it a number nine. Oh boy so there we go I was gonna switch up again um that actually uh, I don't know maybe it, I mean it looks kind of more rose red to me than brown and that would make it a number nine from 1856 to 62 uh, eight dollar cat would be watermark B um, and oh my god there's a bunch of color variations rose red carmine red orange red dull reddish brown um, so girl I give up on that immediately again but that was actually a good one putting them side by side I don't know why I didn't think about that immediately um, clearly when I look at that 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 one's clearer so <sighs> anyways um, I think I'm just gonna set this page aside and um, we'll just continue on. I don't generally do that on these Kyle's Cabin episodes to try and get into um, identifying stuff. I'm just trying to kind of move through and show you guys what I got. But um, that one caught my interest. And boy, this page here, to continue on, is uh, quite filled out. This is impressive. A nice page. Um, wow. A lot of stuff going on here. Look at that. that. What was I saying? Which one had the... If it was a 50 cent lilac would actually have good cat. Uh, oh, it could be violet. Oh, okay, so lilac or violet. Uh, oh, it's, it has to be rouletted. Oh my god, this one is rouletted. You guys see this? Clearly that's rouletted to me. Actually, it's kind of... To me, it's pretty clear. Sorry for the lighting if it isn't perfect. Um, oh boy, that one caught my interest. Okay, so instead of you guys having to go through this with me, let me see if I can figure out what that is. If that's lilac or violet. Okay, well actually, I this is a nice opportunity to use the color card again. Now it has a bunch of violets on here, gray, deep, brown, and then um, just, I guess just plain old violet tint is what they're saying. Anyways, um, here's lilac. Now they do say on the back of these cards, which I thought was a good tip, use the darkest portion of the stamp first when matching colors. So kind of the deepest, darkest, seems around the numerals here for me, and let's go with like the center of the zero and the 50 and kind of put it next to each other. Now it looks nothing like lilac, at least according to this color card. Uh, so when I go to violet tint, um, sorry I don't know why that isn't focusing right. Oh, that's annoying. Well, <laughs> 
what the hell is wrong with my camera here? Um, so I'm going with, um, it looks violet to me. It looks, I'm not sure exactly where on this tint scale I would go with. I mean, somewhere in the middle, probably maybe a little bit to the darker side. Um, you know, uh, but it clearly looks violent, violet, um, <laughs> compared to lilac. I mean, that's pretty, pretty obvious. Sometimes when I look at this color card, just to speak out loud, it definitely makes me question it. I'm like, is that really lilac? I mean, look at it. Lilac? That's lilac? I don't know. I mean, I thought lilac was a little more purple than that. Um, sometimes when I use this color card, I'm like, huh? Are you serious? Um, I, I don't know. Uh, 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 I don't know if it's just me, and maybe I just suck at colors or something. I mean, I didn't think I'd I have any issue with that, but, um, I mean, some things seem to make sense, right? Like, this is purple versus violet. Um, I mean, I'm buying into that being purple. Um, so, anyways, I don't know. I just thought, I didn't think that, honestly, I look at that, I'm like, that's lilac? What? Anyways, um, so I'm going with violet, um, as the color, and so, uh, that would make this a number 35 so bummer we missed the number 34 it's definitely according to this color card not lilac uh, so number 35 or at least 1885 has a $2.40 cat <laughs> bummer I was so close to having um, the better cat value one but anyways I, I thought that was worth checking and um, so I'll go ahead and just slip this guy back on the page okay back to it here so, 1878 to 1943, you can definitely tell how they seem older and then get newer at the bottom. Big old surcharge there, number five. Oh yeah, let me see, any fancy cats? Uh, doesn't look like it. <coughs> okay, so nothing there. Okay, so we have a Manila stock page here with a bunch of different stuff. A little block of four here. Ooh, that one's old. Oh, fancy Cancel Central. Look at that. Beautiful. A double Fancy Cancel on there. Definitely looks like one of the older ones. Um, that looks like that first issue again. Oh, wow. Totally a different color. Can you guys see this? Sorry if I was just messing up the camera. Look at the difference here. Wow. I just keep going down the rabbit hole of this um, this first issue style here. Clearly different colors. Wow. I am kind of buying into that being rose red now. Too bad this stamp is damaged. Oh my god. It's bluish paper. Look at it. This is exactly what I was talking about. See that? Wow, cool. Oh, clearly. Oh, wow, somebody's identified. It looks like it says number eight. So clearly bluish paper, right? Compared to this, it's pretty apparent. Uh, okay, let me go look in the cat about number eight here. Okay, number eight was from 1855. Should be brown red on blued paper. With watermark C, so sixteen dollar cat. Um, so yeah, clearly blue paper. I guess somebody's already done their due diligence to identify what number this is. Assuming that they're right, they could easily be wrong. Um, but uh, so brown red versus what was I thinking the other one? Ro rose red or something? Or, uh, pa or hold on, yeah, rose red. That's what I was considering. So clearly I would be buying into this being brown red. I mean, just look at how much darker it is. Um, and then clearly blue paper. So wow, that's great to see a comparison for that. Did not expect that. And um, what a beauty. Uh, well, I mean, it's totally damaged. Both sides, the top. Um, that's a shame. I wish it was in better shape. Um, and not the kind of stamp you're going to get rich on, but it definitely is a cool stamp. And it's really nice to see uh, the the differences. Um, I, I like 
that I'm actually able to show you guys some blue paper to see that contrast here um, is pretty obvious so wow um, that's cool see this is why I love <laughs> I might do these Kyle's cabinets episodes more often this is why I love going through these cabinets uh, because when I sorted all these things that I have um, I didn't have nearly as much knowledge understanding you know resources as far as online resources as I do now so uh, I'm just better at identifying things and I still struggle obviously um, I think anybody would a lot of this stuff is can be pretty tricky to figure out um, but uh, yeah that's cool to see um, you know I just as I basically as I go through these these stamps that I've already paid for already bought I'm gonna get to see what kind of stuff I have and I'm gonna be able to pick out things better than I ever was uh, when I first got them you know a couple of years ago so I just I like how this goes um, this is fun <laughs> that was cool I, just nice finds right there so there's a stamp you know duplicates um, so these are older this one he has in a mount um, I'm also kind of curious why the mount um, I know that it's not the oldest because of the stars well because of the design and then um, the stars in the corners um, this is the earliest Columbus release that one. These, these are definitely older Columbus releases though right here these are older older stamps period uh, what does this one say? It says oh, telegraphs. Huh. So these are interesting old stamps. I gotta say, um, I need to look at. I don't know why I just wasn't expecting to find anything like that really sparked my interest in this folder. But um, that's just how things go. The journey of checking out stamps, you just never know exactly, at least I never seem to know, what I'm going to be getting into when I go and dig into one of these folders. You know, what kind of neat stuff will I find? Oh, by the way, uh, you know, Hipstamp, uh, the founder of Hipstamp, I forget his name at the moment, reached out to me in an email and uh, was saying that they were considering kickstarting again their consignment service and um, so um, I'm just gonna keep moving along I am gonna bother to look at that my cat uh, he was like hey you know Kyle how many you know would you be interested in using a consignment service and what kind of material do you have, how much, uh, most importantly how much, which I really struggle to come up with a figure, I don't know how many pounds of stamps I have, um, you know they take like a 30 percent commission and you basically send them all your stamps and they, uh, I'm gonna steal that one too, they, s they sell them for you, they organize them, list them however they seem they deem appropriate, uh, sell them on their platform and um, you know they take a 30 percent commission and you get the rest of the money. And I found that interesting you know I was talking with him about it he kind of sent me the initial email and then just scuffed me off to his sales team there I'm sure he's a busy guy uh, who inquired you know, like Kyle you know exactly how much do you have to sell and I haven't responded because um, <laughs> I'm kind of wishy-washy about if I really do want to sell all this stuff or not um, I told him I told the founder I was like look um, I, mean, I have a big tub of stamps that I sell grab bags I mean it's probably like 30 pounds of stamps it's more now since I dumped uh, Carrie's whole collection in it and um, I was like, you know, those I would consider doing the consignment, and um, it's like mixed everything worldwide, da da da. And um, but you know, I was like, I have some binders and albums and stuff that I've been trying to sell too. But uh, I told him I was like, you know, I've got these cabinets that I recreated the whole Scott catalog with, and um, 
I mean, I have disseminated like, you know, over $10,000 worth of stamps in there, at least purchased, like money spent, you know, collections um, worth of stamps into the the cabinets. And he's like, well, how many, or there's, his t sales team was like, well, how many do you think you have? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, uh, and I don't really know how to quantify everything that I have in these cabinets. I mean, you know, ugh. Like, how many pounds of stamps are in my cabinets? I don't know. I mean, Jesus Christ, I, I really don't know. All I can say is, you know, over $10,000 worth, worth of stamps I've organized into these cabinets like that I have no doubt about um, and so yeah I just haven't responded and like plus I told him I said look I I, you, I, I, made, I put a lot of work into these cabinets um, building them sorting stamps into them I mean I'm proud of these cabinets uh, they're a really cool thing in my opinion and um, I use them to make this series, and I wouldn't want to, I'm only on the C's, I mean, oh my god, you guys, I have so much more material to show you guys, like, so much more stamps in these cabinets still to go, and I would really hate to cut this uh, series short, and actually, I have no intentions of doing so, and I told him, I said, maybe after I do a country and I work my way through the alphabet, um, and I kind of keep the stuff I want to keep, <clears throat> and if, you know, basically picked out the, the stuff I want, maybe I could just send him the rest of the stuff in each folder um, as I go through them and, you know, sell that stuff on consignment, but anyway, so I still haven't responded, I don't want to be a dick or anything, I kind of feel bad I haven't responded, but I'm still sort of back and forth on if I even want to use their consignment service, I mean, it's an interesting idea, but um, I really, this is weird. This one's weird. I don't know how much I have, and that's like all they seem to care about. You know, how many? How much do you have? Most importantly, what's the amount? And then I send me another email. What's the quantity? I mean, that's the most important thing. You know, and I'm just like, God damn it! Like, I'm not gonna weigh all my stamps. I have no fucking idea, guys. Exactly how much I have. I mean, crap. I have spent tens of thousands of dollars on these these collections, and how much is it? I don't know. I mean. 50 pounds, 100 pounds, I don't know. I can say in that tub that I built my grab bags, um, I mean, there's there's easily 30 pounds of stamps in that thing, like easy. Uh, probably more. And that's just the tub. So that doesn't count what I have in my albums that I would be willing to consign. What's my cabinets? I, mean, I don't know. I mean, do I have 100 pounds of material? I mean, I just have no idea. You know, to I, I don't know why it's so difficult for me to come up with a figure. Like I don't know. <laughs> I can tell you guys that uh, what I've got in those cabinets is a shit ton of stamps. I mean, it really is a lot of stamps. What's funny to me in my head is I think I know there's people that have bigger collections too. So there's nothing. Um. Well, we made it through the pages. So yeah, anyways, I, I just wanted to mention that. Like, I don't know. What the hell? I'm not going to take all my stamps out and weigh them. And, um... Just like, you know, just like, you know, this kind of stuff. I mean, I know that I have goodies in there. I don't know what countries. I don't know what folders. And uh, I would definitely not be willing to just give it all away to a consignment service as I sit right now. Um, I want to look at it all and evaluate it with the knowledge and resources that I have now um, you know I have absolutely no doubt in my mind whatsoever that as we as I work my way through these cabinets I will be finding some neato valuable old historic cool kind of stuff in there I'm not gonna throw it away I'm not gonna give it away nothing um, you know, it's mine. <laughs> I'm still paying off my credit card. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, I'll check this guy out uh, just for fun later. So we have some sous sheet from 68 here. <laughs> okay, so let me bring you down now. Uh, let's take a look at 
the stock cards 1.1, 1 1, so number 298. Okay. Just kind of run through these. Seventy six. Three seventy seven. Um looks like another oops, it's upside down. Another dam that must is that the same electric dam? Yeah, I think we saw that already. Guy on a horse. Expo seventy. The Saka Japan. Three eighty. One's an airmail C two ninety five. Oh, that's the airmail. Okay. Huh. Mm -hmm. Three eighty four. I can't actually read any of these. <laughs> Some kind of expedition. <laughs> I need to look at though. One's an airmail, one's a regular issue. Four, six. Four, nine. What is this? Some kind of pair. Now these are semi postals, B1 to B2. So these are their first semi postals from 1940. Nice pair. $8 cat, really. Hmm. 576A, this is a set. This is cool. Claudio Gay. Lived in the 1800s. Historia Natural, so like Natural History Museum. Oh, Museo Natural History Museum stuff. That's kind of cool. I like that one. Let's see what we got here. The Year of Tourism in America, 1972, I'm assuming. Uh, pretty similar to the last one we saw. So this one's Airmail. Three thirty-two and thirty-eight. I like the colors on them. That's cool. Kind of a. I don't know what you call that. It's not purple. <laughs> kind of a pinkish reddish. Uh, center of that building. Number three hundred seven. Ship. Another airmail. Juan Molina. Hmm. 750 years of the anniversary of his death, I'm assuming, of uh, San Francisco de Aces. Huh. Kind of looks like Jesus. Another airmail. Casa de Moneda. Hmm. Couple of portraits. <laughs> okay, I got some building here. 419. Those are cool. What's going on here? Definitely older. These are probably postage dues. That one's damaged. Yeah, 
20. I'm going to look these up in the cat just to see. They look like postage dues. Well, that was easy. They are postage dues from 1898. They look like it. They're pretty old looking. That's cool. Older postage dues there. Look like some duplicates. Four twenty one from seventy two. Anniversary of uh, uh, some kind of military anniversary of Bernardo O'Higgins. Mr. O'Higgins, there's Mahatma again. Hmm. Interesting stand. Pretty good amount of stamps. You know, some folders have almost no, actually some folders have none, and some have a, a good bit. Sorry for the footsteps, guys. My people woke up above me. Mm, year of Tourism again, 72. Yeah, bunch of tourism stamps. 433. Sesquicentenario. 1821 to 1971. It's 150 year. Huh. 436. Uh, I thought this was going to be airmail, but it's not. Some sort of observatory. That's cool. I like that. Four forty two. Hmm. Soldiers here about to fire something off, I guess. There we go, that's definitely soldiers. <laughs> Looks like a mean gun. Okay, these ones are neato. They're duplicates or what? Nope. So there's several here. Oh, this one. Hmm. Occupation. It's a hundred years. Neat little stack. Number 369. Juan Molina. Got himself a nice looking genie lamp. Actually, <laughs> that was an oil, oil lamp or something. Okay, what is this here? Official envelope. 1947. Mary Jenkins, acting village clerk. Huh, cool envelope. Seems like, feels like there's some decent amount of stuff. Um, there is. Okay, so that's everything. Kind of spread it out a little. Hmm. Well, kind of more of the same. Those ones are old. Old Columbus. Mm, I wonder if that's a fancy, but it's. You know, it just kind of looks like a blotch. So old Columbus again. Man, the thing's so off center. Ugh. One peso. Airmail. Hmm. 
<laughs> that was a neat little envelope. Let me put these back. 445. 446. Just a couple of random dude stamps here. What is this? So I've written this in my sloppy handwriting. Number 26. 1881. It's roulette. Ah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Similar to all the rest of these. That's an airmail. Um, some sort of paper piece here. Okay, uh, let's do this one real quick. 1879 Combat de Engamos. Looks like ships battling. I have this envelope here. This feels full. Holy. Okay, um. It's a really old, tattered envelope here. Okay, this might just be a bunch of duplicates. C110. Um, I think this is literally an envelope full of the same stamp. My goodness. It must be... Huh. I can see, I can't see the watermark on the back. Well, okay. Just a massive buttload of uh, duplicates here. Let's get all these back in. So I don't know about you guys, but I did a little bit of Black Friday shopping pretty much for myself. Um, I was a bad boy. I spent all kinds of money. Between Friday and yesterday, I spent like a couple, I don't know, I want to say a couple grand. Kind of dumb because um, I just lack self control, what can I say? Um, that was cool. Uh, yeah, I bought a bunch of shoes. What the heck? I was actually very inclined to buy a penny black on uh, Black Friday there. Right in the morning, Stanley Gibbons sent me an email about. I can't remember if it was 20% off or something like that of uh, Penny Blacks. And so I went browsing through their collection. I almost popped like 700 bucks. And I really wanted to get a nice one that was on cover uh, with a red Maltese uh, cross cancel. But I didn't. I had to refrain. Um, anyways, I ended up buying a bunch of shoes, I guess. Still, still was bad boy anyways. And... I bought a bunch of Jordans. I know you guys, a lot of my audience is like 35 to 65, so you guys, I don't know how much you care about Jordans, but they're nice shoes. I, I like them. Uh, they're expensive and um, good quality. You know, actually, uh, this is old. What is this? I may want to look that up too, just for fun. Um, yeah, you know. I've never really been too big into Jordans, but I do have a few pairs, and I have to say, um, one of the, actually, the most comfortable pair of shoes that I have ever put on my foot are my Jordan 19s, which if you guys have ever seen them, they kind of look ridiculous. They're like a, this big uh, kind of tongue on them like covering the laces that I guess is just to secure the laces and um, that's probably like $350 that was a lot uh, for me like you know eight years ago they're beautiful shoes the front of them is like this shiny smooth leather um, the funny thing I've actually gone to this is airmail envelope I've gone to um, important things like court <laughs> wearing my Jordans because they're actually so nice um, the front of them that, uh, okay, this is, 
that I can pull it off using them in court. The dress shoes cover the flashy part of the tongue, so they actually look classy. This is obviously a folded up probably a whole sheet. This is 189 of these uh, number 198s. Oh, this isn't airmail. Um, this is just a regular stamp. Uh, somebody wrote 25 bucks. Um, it's kind of thick, so I really do think this is a whole sheet folded up. Shame, shame it's been folded. I mean, whatever. Here's the same thing with some airmail stamps. You can tell that there's a bunch of them in there, and uh, clearly they've been folded up. A hundred C39 stamps at 20 cents a stamp equals 20 bucks. I see what's going on. It's kind of cool. Uh, so, anyways, um, back to the shoes. Uh, I wanted to mention, I before I bought, I just bought like three pairs of Jordans, uh, which is ridiculous. They're expensive as hell. But um, before I bought them, I I was you know searching online to like see which ones I wanted and to see reviews. And I don't want to get crappy pairs of expensive shoes, right? And uh, there's this YouTube channel that I have just fallen in love with. And his, the channel is called Rose Anvil, R-O-S-E space A-N-V-I-L. Now, he's a guy who owns like a leather factory or le a tannery. And um, he does this weird stuff where he, he takes really high-end boots and shoes and cuts them in half, literally, with a bandsaw to inspect the interior and components of the shoes and give you his opinion of it. Um, he's actually become quite popular. He has like six, seven hundred thousand subscribers, and I've just been binge watching his videos. Look at these, jeez, man. They're not in great shape, so I'm gonna go ahead and handle them with my fingers. Um, I, I, like so, if you guys are interested, in, like I just bought. Uh, also, I bought some work boots, um, Redbacks. Those boots from Australia. Um, he says that they're the most comfortable pair of boots he's ever owned, and I'm, I just watched, I'm not kidding, I mean like a couple dozen of his videos over the last two days, just been laying in bed, binge watching. These are kind of cool. Um, but um, if the guy says, <laughs> like I, I trust the guy now, and I he's pretty unbiased, and uh, if he says that they're the most comfortable pair of boots, work boots he's ever owned, I believe him. And so I went ahead and pulled the trigger. They're a couple hundred bucks. I just bought a pair directly from their website yesterday. Um, wow, this is a lot of airmail stamps, jeez. Uh, so he cuts into um, Jordans, which it's a really weird thing. It, it's like bittersweet to watch somebody cut into like a thousand dollar pair of shoes. But... Uh, so it's a weird feeling to watch that, but it's all for us, you know, to know if if you're going to pay three hundred, five hundred, eight hundred, a thousand dollars for a pair of boots or shoes, you want to know what's inside and that they're worthwhile. And um, so it's been just really, I find it very interesting to watch. He he breaks down. You know, he tests whether things are leather, what kind of leather, the construction of the shoes, yada yada. Um, I I find the channel extremely intriguing, and I went ahead and subscribed because I want to see him break down other stuff. So, anyways, that does it for Chile. Okay, so next one's China. So, anyways, uh, I just want to mention one final thought about uh, Rose Anvil. Um, he did a video where he cut a pair of Crown Northampton shoes. Now, I don't know if you guys are familiar, I wasn't until yesterday. Crown Northampton makes what is considered some of the finest handmade shoes uh, in the world, uh, as far as I know. And they are um, like made in England or something. Uh, and uh, man, to watch him cut into that pair of Crown Northamptons, it was like, oh. I felt so bad for the shoemakers, but they sent him the shoes so that he could cut into them and expose the uh, materials and everything. And it, I just found it incredibly interesting. I can, all I can tell you is I desperately want a pair of Crown Northampton shoes. Like, oh my God, they are so beautiful. Um, they're made to last a lifetime. So, anyways.
Chinese stamps, guys. Um, so we've got the sun symbol. Uh, I think, yeah, I was thinking about Japanese stamps have the chrysanthemum. I think that's Japanese stamps. So this, this is like the Chinese sun symbol. Um, I know some of these stamps can be a pain in the butt to uh, properly identify. I'm kind of curious if these are hinged or what I expect that they are. And that one's a damaged and hinged. So kind of answers that. A neat little set there. Uh, okay. Public of China. Okay, so here's a big Manila stock page. A classic <coughs> junk ship. This one's been overprinted. There looks to be a, a whole lot of these duplicates of this stamp here. Paper piece, Taipei, cancel. I have delved into um, identifying Chinese stamps, and it can be it can be a lot to get into. Just like those Chilean stamps, a bunch of duplicates. Um, it's just not the easiest thing in the world. Of course, it uh, doesn't help that I can't actually just read any of them, but it's doable to figure them out. However, it just takes a little bit of effort. Um, I do wonder, I, I wonder how useful... Let's see, uh, that's an older one. That's cool. I do uh, wonder how useful the stamp identifier app would be these are dragons. These are cool. So, um, uh, you guys are probably familiar already with Chinese stamps. The kind of older, earlier ones are a dragon design. And um, I don't think these are actually going to be um, like the first release or anything, but uh, these are definitely older uh, just because they have the dragon on there. So I'm kind of curious about those. I might go look these up just to see uh, if those pan out to be anything. So these will just look like the junk ship overprints. Um, <laughs> I've looked this guy up before. Um, it's Choo Choo Train. And um, so yeah, I, I've gone through. Looks like about, kind of a bunch of duplicates. I've gone through it um, trying to figure out some of these older Chinese stamps and uh, let's lay some of these out. As we all know Chinese stamps, well a lot of people know Chinese stamps are kind of coming in to be uh, more coveted currently as I talked about in a prior video I think last week uh, because uh, apparently Chinese collectors are coming to America buying all the stamps and taking them home these are neat. So uh, they're just kind of, they're going away. <laughs> they're taking them all back. So they just command a little bit more cat value, but not like crazy. I don't think that they command the whole catalog value, but I did hear something to the effect that some of them actually command nearly the entire cat value now as they just become more and more scarce, which is interesting, so I'll be holding on to my Chinese stamps just in case, you know. You just never know. Supply and demand, huh? Exhibition commemorating the 90th anniversary of Chinese postage stamps, 1968. A souvenir sheet here. So yeah, I don't have way, way too much china, but I do have some, that's for sure, and uh, my grandpa had some too, 
which I've already bothered to identify, catalog all of his. This is a pretty common one here. This guy. See that a lot. Uh, this is also super duper common. Come on, camera. Um, these are all fairly common, yeah. <coughs> Boy, all I've had is coffee, and uh, I'm starting to get hungry. I bought a. Well, I guess not speaking of China, but speaking of Japan, I, I bought a buttload of uh, sushi yesterday. I'm actually kind of ashamed. I, I got drunk and um, I ordered a party platter of sushi for myself, which is over a hundred dollars. Like holy crap! I'm totally splurged. I guess it just goes in line with how I was feeling the last two days, just blowing money like like I'm made of money and I'm not. Christmas seals, really. And um, it's. It's crazy how uh, you can go through so much sushi and it's so expensive. Um, I was actually only able to eat about half, half of it. Um, the party pla uh, platter. <laughs> After binge drinking for a couple hours, I was like starving to death and I thought, what do I want? I said, I'm going to treat myself to some sushi. And uh, so these are cool. Oh, Christmas seals. Yeah, I ate half of a party platter, and holy crap, I was stuffed. Completely stuffed. Um, but it's interesting to eat like $50 worth of sushi in one sitting. Every bite is like 3 to $5. It's ridiculous, right? Um, but uh, I found a really good sushi place. So. so this Hong Kong stamp technically shouldn't be in this folder. It should actually be in my Hong Kong folder. So I'll put that in there. Um, these are common as well, but they're neat. Okay, we'll sort that later. Yeah, I don't come across as many Chinese stamps. Like when I go through people's collections, of course it depends on the collection you buy. Um, but I don't come across them like all the time. These are pretty, pretty common ones too. What is this? Wow. Look at this thing. What the heck? This must be Chinese currency, this little bill. Um, I couldn't imagine this being a stamp. It's in a really stiff protector. I don't even know how this thing opens up. What the heck? I don't see it opening anywhere. I'm not sure what the story is with this, but it's well protected. And, um, huh. What is this doing in my collection? <laughs> Do I see any symbol that actually makes me for sure Chinese? I don't. Oh, yep, China, right there. That symbol. So, that's cool. Um, I don't know anything about this. I don't even know how to get it out of here. And, um... So, I mean, there's got to be a way, because somebody got it in here. Anyways, um, that's neat. And I didn't know I had that. Hmm. I'd have to do some research trying to figure out what's going on with this thing here, but that's pretty cool. Um... Moving on, a couple of duplicates here. We have a nice little set. I can't remember his name. Is it Sun Yat Sen or I forget? Because what is this? 1950 set of 10. Italy. Okay, so disregard the glass scene. A couple of stamps here. Mint hinged. <laughs> this stock card. <coughs> Got a junk ship. 
some of these can have pretty high denoms. I think they went through some inflationary business uh, at some point. And duplicates there, and some kind of building. Huh. Huh. Looks like quite a few in this glass scene. Okay, so several from the same series. Look at that, 50,000. All these older Chinese stamps, they kind of have those perforations like that. They're kind of, I don't know, I want to say cheesy or something. They're just not, like, <clears throat> they're not cleanly perforated. See, like, this one looks like it's been ripped off of something on the right side. Just like the way that the uh, paper fibers are. to separate these stamps whatever so these are fairly common um, yeah none of these uh, none of these say any kind of real value but they're cool and they're old um, kind of stacks of duplicates here so, Surcharge. Huh. Neat little stack. What is this? Oh, I've seen this one before. Um, these are carp. It's two fish. Kind of in a yin and yang ish uh, style two fish circling each other. I think there's more than one stamp here. That looks like no gum. Definitely granite paper. You can see the fibers there, red and blue. I guess it's just one stamp. Wasn't sure it was coming off to me like a couple stuck together. But Christmas seals again. They're the same, they're the same. Okay. Another one, Christmas seals. Light hinged, a complete set. Someone said like not in Mitchell, I guess. Uh, these ones are interesting. They do not ring a bell for me whatsoever. Um, I cannot remember seeing these. They do have a light hinge. This one's a vertical crease. Yeah, this set does not. Uh, this, I'm not familiar with this set, but um, it sounds kind of cool. Interesting to see that. So here we have a couple of stock cards. 2415 from the Republic of China. Looks like 92. 2420. Just a couple of randoms here. This one has a bent corner. Kind of a bummer. That's a pretty scene though. I like the artwork. Looks like a nice place. And this is just the woods, I guess. So this is my writing, 1937, uh, I guess, Men, Menchukuo, China, with a question mark. So I must have failed. Oh boy. Oh, bummer. This one's ruined. You can see the little animals on like the uh, the riverfront or whatever there. Kind of cool. Too bad the thing's uh, just totally beat up. Man, nasty hole. So what do we got here? Uh, okay. 
a train stamp again. That one is super common. I, I, I definitely remember coming across that. We've already seen most of these. Um, okay, I haven't seen some of these ones here. <laughs> Classic Chinese facial hair there. I don't, I don't recall this one whatsoever. Kind of cool. And this one is neat as well. Railroad. This one's pretty cool too. I actually like these. Um, I'm not sure about what that one is, but yeah. okay. People's Republic of China, number 196. Some kind of statue. Um, 1952, I guess. This is, I guess, a complete set. Looks like some kind of industry, industrial oriented. Uh... Oh, I always thought those were cool. Those big diggers. They flip out the bottom of the the uh, bucket there to dump the the ground they scooped. This is actually a pretty cool looking set. Um, I do like this set. Let's pull these out just to see what else is going on here. Yes, yeah, so I love the Earth Digger. I just always thought that was the coolest machine. Looks like a train. This is probably some kind of cement or something. At least it looks like a cement factory up the road. Uh, for me, uh, you know, some kind of industrial stuff. Hard for me to say for sure, but all these already have to look them up. Uh, these guys are like diggers or surveying or something. Big machinery. That's pretty cool. I like this set. Does it say? Oh, 54. These look unused, but there's no gum. Hmm. Maybe they were issued with no gum. That could be... Not sure how you'd adhere them to a envelope then, but whatever. Actually, as I think about it, that doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. Why are there issues with no gum that you can't stick? You're gonna do tape them on there. Hmm. <laughs> never really thought about it, to be honest. I've never questioned why certain issues have no gum. <laughs> I have no idea. Okay, junk ship. There's the flag. Some kind of road. Mm -hmm. And then there's a nice block here. Uh, pretty cool looking. Some kind of building. The classic Chinese architecture going on. Okay, we're almost done. This is looking like a set of some probably politicians or something. Who knows? Famous people. Inventors, engineers. Uh, possibilities are quite broad of what those guys could be. This is an airmail stamp. I know that right off the bat because I bothered to look this up. I had a little bit of trouble. Uh, but uh, I remember because it's the wall of China and the airplane. So it's in my mind a uh, about, actually, I'm 100% sure this is an airmail stamp. Um, pretty old one. But I think it's like 50s or 40s or something. Okay, so number 194. 52 issue. Okay, so nice little set. People's Republic of China mint set. These are nice. You know, I would... I'm not sure. I feel like they're airmail, but I don't really know. I don't know what Chinese symbol to look for on Chinese stamps to indicate airmail. It's probably like... I just don't know. <laughs> okay, the final one. Oh, cool. 
another dragon. Oh, so this one I've already identified, which uh, leads me to believe that uh, these other ones I set aside probably aren't the original dragons either. Um, interesting, that one says Kandarin. Uh, so this is number 111 from 1900 to 06, 275 cat. Yeah, and there's just older styles of these dragon stamps, you know. So this, uh, none of these are probably going to pan out to be much. I feel like I could almost consider that to be a fancy cancel, but not really. I mean, it's just some kind of grid cancel. I'm, I'm not sure if I'd call that a fancy, but... Um, I'm kind of curious about these, so I'll probably look those up. Okay, so of the three Chinese stamps that I set aside, uh, this one actually ended up being something kind of special. So, um, this is that early dragon design that I was talking about. Uh, I just actually have never come across one, and I wasn't familiar enough to just pick it out right away. <clears throat> but... Um, the trick here is not only the design, but the word Kandarin. So this is actually number 13 from 1888. Uh, now, the difference between this and the very first Chinese stamp is this bottom here. Well, for one thing, the perfs. But uh, the bottom where it says Kandarin, on the earliest release, instead of Kandarin being white and there being uh, color around it, the actual letters Kandarin are colored and it's white around the letters. So they did a little switcheroo here on the bottom word Kandarin. So that's an indicator of whether it's the first issue or not. And um, <clears throat> for one thing, this being like, let's say, the second issue, um, this is, let me get there in the thing here, this is from 1888. Um, this is actually. I guess you could say the third issue, let's say. Uh, they kind of did this first design and had a few releases of it until they switched to a new design. And um, <clears throat> so um, compared, let's say this is the third release, the second release um, would be perf 12 and a half. Well, this one's perf 12. So I measured it and um, I'm quite confident it's perf 12. So. It's from 1888, uh, number 13, has a $60 cat value, not bad. And um, it's just a really cool stamp. Unfortunately, uh, one of these purfs was bent, so I bent it back, and then there's kind of like, you know, the corner isn't perfect here, so whatever. Um, also, is this the one? Yeah, somebody wrote 35 on the back, so that was a little off-putting. I went and checked the catalog, and it's definitely not number 35 so I don't know what that number is about obviously you can see it's been rubbed off here as a thin spot uh, hinged looks like probably twice maybe one nasty hinge but it looks like two so some flaws da 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 but um, overall I mean that's a really old shiny stamp and it's pretty cool that I found one uh, it was nice to um, get a good look at the earliest design that way I can try and imprint this in my mind of what the early dragons look like so I can try to remember that later <clears throat> uh, so anyways that was a really cool one I knew it looked older and it was a dragon so that's what cued me into um, keyed me into that I should probably look into it more so that one was really cool now this is the second one it's turned out to be number 86 from 1897 450 cat uh, another dragon as you can tell totally different all right so this is where the dragon designs just differ and um, anyways uh, so older newer and um, so nine years newer this one more recent let's say uh, so this one was pretty cool too and it is a dragon stamp now this guy also is a dragon stamp but um, here's the thing with this let me get back in the catalog here uh, so for this issue, it could be watermarked or not. Um, now, when I went to flip it over to check the watermark, it became pretty obvious a big nasty tear. Nasty hinge, there's paper left on the back. I mean, this thing is in piss poor shape. This stamp is ruined. So, um, if it weren't in that condition, I would bother, you know, 
to try and figure it out, but basically it's either number 99 from 1898 or number 111 from 1906. Since I have no faith I'll be able to see the watermark on the back because of this paper left over there, uh, left on the back, I'm just going to, and it's in such poor shape, I'm just going to toss it back in the folder um, and kind of ignore it. Um, I do like to cancel though. Um, tell me what you guys think. Is this considered a fancy cancel? I mean, I don't think so. I know fancy cancels are generally cork, and um, clearly this is not cork is how I would feel about it. Um, so I don't really think it's fancy cancel. If it were to be considered one, I would put it in my album, even though it's ruined, um, just for the cancel. But uh, I don't think it's actually a true fancy cancel. This is just probably considered an obliterator. So anyways, those were pretty neat. Yeah, so I found some cool fancy cancels, some old Chilean stamps, some animal stamps. Got to finally mess around with my color gauge, which uh, seemed to be useful. And uh, I'm not sure if that gauge is meant mainly for like US stamps or not, but... Oh my goodness, hold on guys. We're not done. <laughs> I set aside an entire stack of China. <laughs> okay, so back to the desk. Whoopsie. Alrighty. Let's finish this off now. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, so here's another 111. Interesting though. Oh, I thought it said 19 bucks, so 275 cat. Yeah, yeah. Look at the cancel on this guy. That's interesting. Then we have the junk ships. Overprint action. 1931 to 32 here. So it looks like we're getting more recent as we go. Um, just a couple up here. We have, sorry, some down here. I wonder where I got these pages. Probably that eBay box. So these are all pretty common. Oh wow, so we have a postage due stamp. So let me bring you back down here. Sorry, guys. Doing this on the fly. So here's a really old postage due. Kind of a heavy cancel. Kind of hard to see. The actual stamp. This is airmail, 1929. And then here are those plain with the Great Wall of China stamps that I was mentioning earlier. So um, I knew they were airmail. It is actually a big set. That one's different. Okay, so we got just some on the back. And see all the different ones, different overprints, surcharges, what have it. Okay, so this is 1941. Ooh, train stamp. Okay. Ooh, there's actually quite a bit on this one. This one has two different overprints, black, or a surcharge, and probably an overprint, green and black. This is actually fairly complete. This is cool. I mean, definitely missing some, but... <coughs> Not bad. 42 to 46, 44 to 46. That's a nice page right there. Already sell it. So 43, kind of large for a Chinese stamp. Hmm. 
Hmm. So a few in here. It looks, looks like one little set. Boy, look at that. Well, too bad the corner's bent there. This whole page is filled out. Wow. Hey, this is a nice way to finish off. This is a beautiful page. I really don't think any of these have high cat. I don't know for sure, but no, they're just not quite that old. 45 to 47. Um, that was a beautiful page. Wow. Somebody cared. And look at that. Holy crap. Nice. This is a nice page, well. Most of these just seem to be mint hinge. There is one used one. A couple have been removed. A few, actually. Four of them. Hmm. That one's used. Hmm. Oh, neato. Hey. Those are nice. This, is a, this page is beautiful. Jeez. I like to see that. So, um... That was it, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Uh, this episode is going to be fairly long. I know it because I took my sweet time. Uh, so, if you stuck through to the end, I appreciate what you're watching. If you enjoyed my videos, hit that like and subscribe button. It helps me out. helps this channel stay alive and grow. And um, I do appreciate everybody's continued support of my channel. I'll be back later on, and I think next time I'm going to check out Christopher's box that he sent me. So we'll see what kind of goodies Chris has sent my way for our trade. And uh, as always, take care, be well, thank you, and I'll catch you later. Bye.